All right, welcome back, everyone. Let's dive right back in. Booker's coming off that big loss to Venice last week, hoping to turn it around against Bayshore. First quarter we begin, Bayshore literally threw only one pass. Running the ball well, Alex Mobley, a nice gain up the gut there. Then the Bruins find the end zone with a nice little cutback up the middle to Dominic Everett crosses the goal line for the opening score. Seven zip Bayshore, Tornadoes. Got the ball, had a few issues early on, but a nice pass here from Jermaine Leverett to big Dyquarius Williams. First down there, but the drive would stall. So early second quarter, Bruins get the ball back, punch in a touchdown from the one yard line. It's Clayton Hansen, middle of the pile, 13 not at that point, but as you just saw, Tornadoes whirled their way to a strong second half and won it 28-27, a nice win for Booker. In Bradenton, Strong Southeast team didn't have to go far to take on Braden River and the Seminoles whooping up on the Pirates in the first half. Second half, second uh, here for Mike Glover, 15 yard gain for the first down. Next play, handoff to Javar Beatty for the 35 yard first down run. Nice play there. Braden River goes for it on fourth and short. Good play by the safety to get up and bat the ball down. So the Knolls get the ball. Brian Waiters flings to Adrian Richards. Nice catch on the sidelines. Next play, Jacob Sannon grabbing the floater there. He's wide open, first down. And then Brian Poole keeps up the middle for a 15-yard first down run. He's tripped up. Then a Poole again on the keeper. He's not going to be tripped this time. That's a touchdown. Southeast cruised in this one, winning easily in a shutout, 31-0. Port Charlotte made the trip up I-75 to take on Lakewood Ranch. Anthony Campbell straight ahead for the opening score. 7-0, Port Charlotte, really? Second quarter, more from the Pirates. James Romulus will not be denied. Breaks through for six, another Port Charlotte score. But the Mustangs charge. Zach Larson to Seth Browning for a quick hit first down. And then the trickeration, it's a reverse. Skokos is running free. He's a wild Mustang. Lakewood Ranch is on the board. Ford Charlotte, though, moves the ball on its next possession. Tyler Harless finds Alwyn LaPlace for a first down there, and he's hit out of bounds. Then it's Harless to big Logan Tuttle. He bounces off some would-be tacklers. Get off me and in for the touchdown. Strong play from that young man. End of the half for Lakewood Ranch, and why not some Tom Foolery? It's a hook and ladder, and they run it to perfection. Zach Larson to Skokos, he's gone. Great play call and well executed. This game was tied at 21 at the break, but in the second half, Mustangs went hard, going on to win it 42 to 21. What a second half. All right, Palmetto must have one of the toughest schedules of any team in our area. Tigers hosting an undefeated freight train called Charlotte. Melvin Burston gets a 20 yard gain early on here up the right side. Next play, Marquis Green going up the middle for a touchdown, a little surprise. Paul Meadow takes a 6-0 lead. Not many people saw that coming, but then came the hit of the night. Unfortunately, it was on a female manager. Watch her on the sideline, red shirt, red shirt, no! She was okay, I'm told she walked it off. Bellamy was fine too. Mike Bellamy, how about a 60-yard untouched score for him? That's ho-hum stuff for the region's best back. Then came another huge hit. Corey Crawford scrambling and just nailed right here. Preston Ritchie, wow, pops the ball loose. That is impressive. As expected, Charlotte wins easily, 46 to 13. All right, well, we had a couple of teams playing out of town tonight, so we've got you covered. Plus, if you missed any of our show, we've got you covered there, too. Here's tonight's scoreboard.
All right, when Friday football fever continues, it is the segment all the ladies wait up for. Herald Tribune sports columnist Doug Fernandez takes a break from covering the Rays and the playoffs to join us here, and we will take it. Stick around. All right, welcome back. Herald Tribune sports columnist <laughs> Doug Fernandez in the house. He's back from the Rays, covered a little football tonight, done Eden at Riverview, blowout city. Why isn't there a piece of plexiglass up here so you get me sick? Stay away, man. Oh I don't want to get you sick. Uh, yeah, it was 35 <clears throat> nothing, uh running blowout. clock in the fourth quarter. Man. Uh, this was to be expected. The Rams defeated uh, Dunedin by about 35 points last year. Right. Uh, Tater Williams threw three touchdown passes. Right. John Evans ran in a touchdown. Uh, you know, the team bus was about 20 minutes late for the need, and had they known what was in store, they would have avoided this trip altogether. Uh, next week, they got Palmetto, then Manatee. So this was like a tune-up right. game for a review. And essentially, Palmetto will be somewhat of a tune-up game again. Talk about Tater Williams. He's really come on. They, they throw the ball now, Riverview. Uh, he had five TDs going in. He had three today. You know, I've been covering Riverview quite a bit. They haven't really had a quarterback who could really throw like this. They've been primarily right. a running team. Right. But he can really throw the ball. Andy Robustelli, whose who's grandfather, Played back in the NFL back in the 50s. He's a pass catching tight end, really good target. So they're very well balanced. You know, they lost to they lost to Venice. Their only loss of the year. So right. they easily could be undefeated. Quickly, you covered the ALDS. What's wrong with the Rays? Ten seconds. Uh, their bats have termites, <laughs> and unless they get the termites out, they're going to go down in three in a row starting tomorrow. Doug Fernandez, <laughs> thank you very much. That'll do it. I apologize for our voice. That's it. More news and weather just ahead. Stay with us. <laughs>